The show will start soon. Good afternoon, Tutok Nation. We're here again to open our eyes with this sizzling hot revelation. Live now here in Tutok with Rose. But before anything else, let us introduce our guests for this day. Starting with Ms. Elisha Kaabas, President of Greenpeace Philippines. The main goal of this organization is to protect natural landscapes, species, and more from environmental threats. Let us give a round of applause for Ms. Elisha Kaabas. Oh, Thanks for having me here, Tita Rose. It's really a pleasure to be here. Our next guest is Ms. Arlene Dasok, President of Food and Agriculture Organization, an organization that provides food security for all and ensures high-quality food to live active and healthy lives. Hi! Good afternoon, Tita Rose. Good afternoon, watchers. Third in line is Mr. Johnny Pehuan, Student Council President from UP Diliman. Greetings, Tita Rose. I'm very honored to be here representing my co-students. Our next guest is Ms. Jasmine Biatingo, founder and CEO of Girls Got Game, a company that is run by female athletes that helps young women to be physically and mentally stable. Thank you, Tita Rose, for inviting me. It's my pleasure to stand for the Filipino women. And last, but will never be the least, Mr. Arnel Arvis, leader of National Alliance Men Philippines. I'm Mr. Arnold Arbis, leader of National Alliance Men Philippines. After introducing our lovely guests, let us go on our first segment, Social Media Minute. This segment will make use of queries and ideas posted on social media with the hashtag to talk about. For the first tweet, we'll get the response from our today's first guest. President of Greenpeace Philippines, an organization that protects natural landscapes, species, and more from environmental threats. Miss Elisha Kaabas. Hello, Putita Rose. From Filipinos. As a leader yourself, what qualities do you think the nation's next president should have? Hashtag to talk about. As a leader myself, I think the next nation's president should possess a good strategic vision that can lead this country into a good path. Someone is very concerned with our country's contemporary issues, and above all, we need a selfless, hardworking, and trustworthy person who is willing to give his own self for this country. Thank you, Ms. Elisha Kaabas. That is indeed a must quality of India. Moving on, let me introduce our second guest. She is the president of Food and Agriculture Organization, an organization that provides food security for all and ensures high-quality food to lead active and healthy lives. Miss Arlene Dasok. Hi, Tita Rose. Hi. A tweet from Outside Seas. Which presidential candidate in this court? And how is your choice relevant to the organization? Hashtag to talk about. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's really a very hard question. Um, well, as the president of Food and Agricultural Organization, um, I think I should be careful to whom candidate I'll give my vote and support with. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I would probably choose Pongbong Marcos. We all know that he's the governor of Ilocos. I have read that under his leadership, the province saw an exponential growth in rice and corn production, as well as the livestock output. And I have read an article that as a senator, he filed some bills to promote economic growth nationwide, like the National Irrigation Program of 2013, Anti-Rice Wastage Act of 2013, National Seeds Production Act of 2013, and many more. Also, during his time as a senator, TVM must constantly defend the interests of tobacco farmers against the unreasonable increase in excise taxes on tobacco products. Well, according to him, the imposition of unreasonable excise taxes would destroy the livelihood of tobacco farmers and the tobacco industry as a whole. So, that is some reason why I'll choose him because he knows how to value and how important the agriculture in the Philippines is. Thank you! Thank you, Ms. Arlene Daso. Our third guest is Mr. Arnel Arvis, 
leader of National Alliance Men Philippines, a non-profit organization geared towards development and promotion of spiritual and physical health of its members. Good day, Peter Rose. Good day. From M Struggle. Lol, my sister says she won't participate in voting since wala naman daw matino. How could I persuade her to vote? Hashtag to talk about. What do you say about that? Um, you must inform your sister to practice her right to vote. As a Filipino citizen and having democratic country, we have the voice to choose our next leader, not same as the other countries. We must choose the great leader for the betterment of our country. With that, you may present her facts and propaganda by each candidate. And from there, you may choose who will be our next leaders. Thank you, Mr. Arnel Arbis. With your tips, I'm sure M struggled sister will be convinced to vote in the upcoming election. For our fourth guest, here is Ms. Jasmine Biatinko, founder and CEO of Girls Got Game, a company that helps young women to be physically and mentally stable. Good day, everyone. Hi, Peter Hi. People have their own opinions, but in terms of who to vote for the next election, how would you persuade people to sign it? Hashtag, we talk about it. That was from Halaka. Um, this is a very challenging question for me, but as the founder and CEO of the Girls Got Game, first, I respect their opinions or perspective about the people whom they want to choose for the next election. But I believe I can still persuade people to side with me if I tell them that this person is really the best and very responsible and have the capabilities to be the next president of this nation. And this person is worth to choose and also this can help a lot of people, especially those who's in need. And this is also for the sake of our country. Thank you, Ms. Jasmine Biatinko. Finally, our last guest for today, Student Council President from UP Diliman, Mr. Jandrik Dehuan. Good day, Tita Rose. Good day. A short question from for the week. How important it is to take sides? Hashtag to talk about. Well, as a student and the president of Student Council, I witnessed and experienced a lot of situation where I had to choose side, especially when it comes to the safety of my co-students. It is necessary to it is necessary for me to choose the right side to gain the trust of my co-student and and maintain my reputation as the leader. But choosing the right side is very difficult. You have to gather all information to be able to analyze it before you build a proper judgment. Thank you for all the guests' insightful responses. I hope our viewers learned something from them. Now, moving on to our next segment, Spill It or Sit It. For Spill It or Sit It, we will be providing characteristics or activities and our guests will guess which presidential candidate did it. Which presidential candidate filed the case to Comelec? For not winning the Vice President 2016 position, raise your answers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The answer is Bong Bong Marcos. He made an electoral protest to the Supreme Court for Emmanuel Bogdan County. It is denied for the Supreme Court then For our second question, who is the presidential candidate who is called user friendly? Place your vote in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The answer is Tom Moreno. When he is running for vice mayor era, his friend helps him to his campaign to win against his opponent. After his term, he aspires for a higher position and runs against era and me. He wins by revealing his friend's dirty secret. Third question. 
who was involved in laundering more than $700 million. Most of it is drug money. When he served as top cop under former President Joseph Estrada. Raise your answers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is Senator Finn Lacson. Last 2001, newly elected Senator Chief Colonel Victor Cortez. Senator Lacson was involved in laundering more than $700 million, which most of it is drug money. That question ends our second segment for today. Seems like most of our guests were startled after knowing different facts about the presidential candidates. Let us also hear the opinion of one of our audiences. May I hear from you, Remar Aboy? In my own perspectives, based on what I've heard, about the facts of the presidential candidates, I got shocked because some of the candidates that might be the next president of our country is involved in some corruption activities. It also includes that they are not fighting fairly in candidacy. Instead, they are using their power in legal way. We must be careful on who we are going to vote. Vote wisely and approve those candidates who deserve to be in that position. Talk Nation, are you still with us? Because everything is just starting to get really, really hot. For this segment entitled Debate Among Debate, I'm going to give each of our guests different questions that they will answer based on their beliefs. This will basically reflect their political views. Shall we start? My first question is That gender of a leader especially presidential candidates, affect the way he or she manages various issues and matters. Yes, in like with what we are experiencing right now, we need a leader who will drive our nation to success again. The Philippines once called the Pacter of Asia on the year 1960s. On that era, we have been led by bachelors to make our nation big stuff. Historically speaking, we have already 16 presidents, and 14 of which are all male. Do we really need a female leader who are soft-hearted and fragile? I don't think so. What we need right now is a leader who is firm, strong-willed, and assertive. Thank you. Wow, Tita Rose, that question is very intimidating, but it can stop me to prove to all of the people, especially to you, Mr. Misogynistic, that gender is not the basis for someone to be capable of being the next president of our nation. For me, women and LGBTQ members can also lead our nation. Firstly, women and other genders can get along with anyone, especially competitors. Secondly, they are official members in our barangays. They help a lot of people and they are capable of doing men's work. Thirdly, women and LGBTQ members also lead our nation instead of dominating heartless presidential men candidates. You haven't seen yet the capabilities of them. Men may be strong, but women tend to be more democratic and more likely to be a role model of our nation. And that makes them powerful and worth it to be a leader, especially as presidential candidates. Thank you. Wow, there is some blatant conversation we got there. How about you, food population? Do you agree or disagree with them? Let us know in our social media page. We're now going to proceed to our next question. Does the previous corruption activities of certain presidential candidates matter especially in this present time where we are choosing who deserves to be the president of our country? Or should we just set them aside and focus on projects that they contribute this on them? Yes. We should consider the previous corruption activities that was done by those certain presidential candidates because it may reflect on the activities that they might do in the future. Remember that whoever the next president will be, the Scottish future will now be all by their hands, so we have to choose wisely. Our votes makes a difference. It's a no for me. 
I think we should focus more on what they have contributed during this time of pandemic. Just like what the other people said, your past doesn't define your future. Because the pandemic affects the life of many people, and their only hope is the help from the government. In times like this, those in the, in the position should not neglect their work to help their people and this country. If you made them stay in the past, this is the right time to make up for it. Because your mistake yes. in the past will not stop you from helping those in need in the present. I think that the one who helped when needed the most has the capability to be a great leader. Thank you. Let's end when it's so nice because your statements are just shady. What can you say about that, Mr. Commission? We would like to hear your opinion about that. For our last smoky and smelly question. What do you think your chosen presidential candidate would do to restore our economic state during this pandemic? I think Lenny Ray Bobby should be the next president of the Philippines because she is a very hardworking and passionate kind of person, which perfectly suits the characteristic of a good leader. Under her leadership as the vice president of this country, she did strongly fight against women empowerment and gender inequality, <coughs> two of the most controversial issues. Um, the pandemic impacted many aspects of our lives. We have experienced a lot of lockdowns and restrictions as part of the nationwide community quarantine to limit the spread of the virus. Most of our countrymen lost their job and their fate due to the pandemic. On this time, I would cast my vote to Senator Manny Pacquiao to be the next leader of our country. He wants from a poor family. He knew the struggles and effort of most Filipino people. His heart is with the poor and he will be doing platforms for the sake of indigent people. Well, no. Francisco Damagoso, also known as Young Mix Comoreno, the father of Manila, is a Filipino politician and actor and serving as the 22nd mayor of Manila since 2018. Born and raised in the slums of Manila, he is already exposed to a difficult life at the young age. And from being slum to being the mayor of Manila, he has the capability of becoming the great leader. Throughout his tenure as a mayor of Manila, he transformed Manila into a green and clean city and built many projects and infrastructure, helped many workers and students, especially in this time of pandemic. In this presidential election, I will put my trust to Scomanero that with his ability, he can change our country. I will give my vote to Bongbong Marcos. Well, like what I've said earlier, he knows how to value and how important the agriculture in the Philippines is. And aside from that, Bongbong's political career now spans over three decades. He has served as provincial governor, congressman, and as a senator. He knows how to handle the people and the nation, so he will use his experience on how to restore and bring back to life the economy in the Philippines after this pandemic and as well as how to solve this pandemic, like what he did in Ilocos as the governor and as a senator. So I guess that's some of the reason why he's eligible to be the next president of the Philippines. Holy moly, I feel like I'm electrocuted by the tension everyone is rejecting. This is some very shocking debate you got there. I hope that our two top nation was convinced and they have chosen whom they are voting for the next election that is perfectly fitting to be our country's next president by these heated arguments that was given by our guests. And that's all for today. Tune in tomorrow for the latest issues and chicas surrounding you. Remember, politics is not a game, but a serious business. Have a great day, everyone!